Every year for a few days during March, visual journalists, designers and developers from across the globe assemble in the city of Pamplona. The University of Navarra is the venue for the Melo Fuge Awards and World Summit, the annual celebration of the very best in infographic and data visualization design. In 2012, I was invited to the 20th edition of this prestigious event. Just attending Melofias was a privilege in itself, but to participate as a judge and speaker, alongside some of the most talented people in the field, was a defining experience. 2017 was the first opportunity I had to return to Pamplona. As this was the 25th anniversary event, I wanted to mark this special occasion and salute its significance to me and my career. Despite having no experience, no knowledge and frankly no talent, I aspired to make a short film to document the essence of what makes Malofia such a unique and enduring event. Enlisting my trusted co-producer, armed with only two iPhones, two microphones and two stands, we jetted off from the UK bound for Pamplona to interview some of the principal protagonists and to capture the Malofiage experience. Malofiage is an annual conference dedicated to celebrating visual journalism. It's the biggest infographic co contest in the world, I think. It's really the, the, the top-notch professionals in, in the field of information design. I think this is the place where all the great minds in the world come together. It's, a, it's sort of a week of different sorts of events that all come together as the Infographics World Summit. We had um, three days of very intense judging. Um, there are show don't tell workshops. Then we have the conference after that which is two more days of talks. So it's kind of a packed week of, of learning and judging. Uh, drinking red wine and having a lot of tapas. Um, I heard about the conference last year and I didn't come because I thought oh a lot of graphic artists and journalists. I don't know if I would fit in or know what to do. As a digital designer and developer, I think it's important for people like me to give perspective that's outside of my skill set. As a data scientist, I come from more of a math, science, coding background. And this is very much a graphic artist, journalist background. And I think it'd be a wonderful way to broaden my perspective, my horizons, my skill sets, and even just how to think about things. I was here last year uh, as a member of the jury and as a speaker. And it was my first Malofiak last year, so I was very delighted to be invited. I saw that for this special anniversary edition, a lot of people I knew, uh, but I never met in person, were coming as well. And that for me was like really an, a motivation to come here again to Pamplona and uh, participate uh, in, in the conference. I've missed one out of the last six years, so I've been here five times. I remember my first year um, coming, I uh, participated in the workshop as well. And so uh, meeting people like Alberto Cairo and John Grimwade and Juan Velasco and Jeff McKee, I felt like I was meeting some of the, the greats in the field and learning from them. And then the uh, bonds that I made with people in the workshop while I was there and then being able to see them every year. It's just really kind of special to greet people that you see once a year, like their, their old friends and colleagues. What I liked about uh, the talks was that they were building um, on top of the talks we had last year. Um, so some discussions about having interactivity, having no interactivity. The title of the talk was um, What the Worst User Interface Ever Can Teach Us About Design. There is a machine in my building uh, where you refill the card to put into the laundry machine and I, it's the worst designed machine I've ever seen. So the talk I gave this morning was entitled Once Upon a Time from Data to Stories and the culmination of several months of research on stories and the structure of story and the definition of story. We use the word story with data too often and not carefully enough. We just say everything's a story and I'm trying to argue, or I am arguing, that not everything is a story. My talk was about how my team um, drew inspiration from children's book authors, particularly like picture books, story books, and that sort of thing, um, and how to use that to make really effective journalism. 
Um, the title of the uh, talk this morning was called Sketchibition, the art of mining your ideas. It's not just about doing hand sketches, it's, it's, it's more of sketching as a tool for thinking. This year I specifically came because I'm very interested in the um, move towards mobile. It is more based on the mobile and the mobile experience and how you get what we do as a craft across to the across to the people on a small screen. We're all thinking about how we can move our graphics, our large, beautiful print graphics to mobile. And many speakers here actually touched on that subject, but it seems to me we're all struggling with the same question. There's no answer yet. One of the next steps is definitely trying to translate these elaborate print pieces and, and, get, and doing it justice on the web. Things are becoming a lot more audience-centric, and I think a lot of people said that in the conference, and that's one of the things I'm really taking away, that we've got to do user testing, we've got to see what people need and want, and how they want the information presented to them. Talk to them and listen to them, and um, work from their perspective instead of just doing something you like as a designer or a programmer. So I was judging in the print uh, group, there are two groups, the print and online, I was in the print, we are uh, nine judges this year. So judging is kind of like editing in that you have a lot of work from all over the world spread out on the table and you go through and just start whittling down. So the first phase, there's no discussion. People are just putting coins, or poker chips actually, into cups uh, and saying whether they want them in or out. We vote with coins, so it's an uh, inverted cup. And we just place the coins inside so no one knows how many coins there are. Um, then the second phase, we do what we want to keep. Um, and though sometimes you're still on the fence about certain things, so you might vote for it just so that you can have a discussion later and see if somebody can convince you one way or another. And then the third one, we vote um, if it's going to get an award. Then the fourth phase is actually decide on big awards as well as uh, like best of show or special awards. Well, I was part of the online judging process, so there were five of us spent about three days judging all the digital entries. What we initially did was we had gone through and just looked at the uh, work individually to try to get a census of everybody's position of what they thought was worthy of further discussion to keep that. So basically editing down and curating those 900 entries. Some of the discussions were pretty quick. Some of the discussions were like, nope, not this one. Others were like, yes, definitely. And some of them were like, well, maybe, and then, uh, then just talk about those and then, and then uh, awarding the medals. Of course, there's a, the bronze, silver, and gold. What we found was that even though we had many different perspectives, that we were actually more or less all on the same page. And then we came together as a group, all five of us, to merge all of our votes together and then sort of assess uh, as a group what we thought about each and, and award the medals that way. In any kind of competition, there's some sort of subjectivity to it. You also bring some personal bias to it. So you try to be as objective as possible. I didn't quite understand the undertaking that it was for the, the, the jury. They, I mean, there's a lot of amazing material to go through. One thing I noticed a lot is there are so many different styles. So there's a different South American style, there's a different uh, style from Italy. Amer you know, Americans do things one way. Finland, it's another. There's different languages and different audiences and what might have been successful for a, a newspaper for their particular audience might not translate for um, for a, a jury out of context. So the, the winners are um, graphics that uh, can transcend um, their uh, initial intent. The awards from Malafier really are I think the highest standard and highest level of award that an information graphic can win. It's a really huge honor. It means that your project was clear and compelling and beautiful and that it really had something to say. You don't see the volume of, 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 of work that's there, so to actually make it all the way through to the end, through so many different opinions, um, through so many different judges is, is, is really tremendous. I think that everyone that has a medal in Malofier 
have to be uh, really, really proud of the achievement because it's a, it's a, it's a hard contest and it's also a recognition between colleagues that, that we are, you know, we try to be fair, but we, are, but we try to be also very, very careful in, uh, in our solutions. I have been fortunate to work at National Geographic where we've uh, done quite well in the competition but we also have a big team and a lot of resources. Whereas for a lot of smaller publications, a bronze can really make someone's career. It can uh, elevate a graphics department within a newsroom, and so the awards really are the industry standard. I think the recognition, it goes beyond the personal recognition, right? So it's great for your, your team and your publication, you know? Um, people get a bit of wind in the sails after that, and you go back and you're refreshed, and it. it, it it encourages people to come up with new ideas and push themselves even further and just getting that bit of recognition and knowing that the world's taken taken note of the work that they're doing is is the the main takeaway I think it's fantastic. To win an award is really in, in the middle of all these amazing people because all the attendance of this kind of uh, summit is are really the level is really high. You know, all of us will work very hard and get this kind of awards is like a people like my work, no? So I come back to DC with more energy to continue making graphics. So that is the, the main feeling. Well, I have to agree with him and uh, it's quite an honor to receive uh, an award from such an institution. And uh, I feel very happy to be here after, well, to, I hope to be for the next 25 years too. I work at the graphics department of the New York Times. Um, we won several awards here at Malifuge, and we're incredibly honored and appreciated for you know, our work and for everyone's work to be recognized. Um, it's really an honor. So thank you again for, for this award. Uh, thank you. One of the reasons I come back to Malafie is really the camaraderie and almost communion that happens with members of this community. Uh, it's all about the people really and the contacts, the friendships. We make friends, make, make connections. It's a huge boost, you know, you go back like really recharged after this. Well, I really come back to chat to the people and it's chatting at lunchtime, it's chatting in the evenings, it's chatting at the bars. That's really where you get to know the people and what they're doing. Um, but so I find actually kind of uh, kind of the smaller moments in, in waiting for talks and talking with the person next to me. So you never know who you're going to be sitting next to, somebody from a, a smaller paper perhaps. Every lunchtime, every uh, the pinchers night, uh, an evening like this, uh, we have discussions um, about the talks. That's probably something that we start with. But it leads to all kind of topics that, that are happening in our daily field of work. Sometimes we talk more about graphics when we are outside uh, having dinner or having a glass of wine with the colleagues in a very, in a very friendly way that inside of the, <laughs> of the workshop. Sometimes the big ideas uh, appear when you are having a, a, a pincho in a, in a bar. When I first came here, I realized that there was a place where you could actually have an infographic community. I didn't know there was such a thing. And I think a lot of us, we work in these smaller departments. We don't really have much support network. And I, I came here and I was like, wow, there's an infographic setup. So it's great to finally get out in an environment where I'm around fellow professionals that I can pick their brains about things, they can pick my brains about things. It's fun being here, as opposed to maybe an academic conference or a conference with developers. Uh, technical people, so I'm happy to be here. A lot of newsrooms only have one or two people working on um, different forms of visual journalism. Sometimes really lonely uh, on working, even though if you're working on a team, um, it's always good to share this with, uh, with other friends. It was very hard to build up any, um, any sense of community. And I think the Malefic played a massive role in that, in bonding us together as a, as a, as a discipline. And, and I think it elevated the standard immensely. The staff here, the, the, the organizers took great care of the, of the judges. We're treated like 
kings and queens. Thank you so much to the students, especially because um, we were often hungry and cranky and um, sometimes short-tempered. It has been extraordinary, I'd say. I mean, you know, I, I talked to a lot of different people about what I was getting into, and everybody told me the same thing. You're gonna work really hard, you're gonna stay up late, and you're gonna eat a lot of meat. I've never been quite as exhausted as I am right now. And the jet lag and the, uh, the working for a week straight. This week at Malofiage has been honestly one of the best conference experiences of my life. Gives you a new perspective, and yeah, every year I come back home more inspired. The experience has been absolutely fantastic and it's really great to be here as a design, as a designer and as a design director who is also a news junkie. It's one place where you really, you get your hands on the subjects and you just, just being with so many people in the same field is amazing. It's really broadened my perspective of how to do things and I'm just so excited about all the people I've met here, everything that I've learned here. I would love to come back. It's an extraordinary experience to be able to look through, in our case, 900 visualizations, the vast majority of which are, you know, some level of, of extraordinary work. Um, there were very few where it was immediately like, nope, this is, this is, I mean, and so you've, you've got this library of, of beautiful pieces to look at uh, for one reason or another. So I, it's been a fantastic week in the, and the weather's lovely here. So it's, it's been fantastic.